previous lesson, we have studied the chapter Atomic Structure and Chemical Bondings. In our today's lesson, we are mainly going to talk about ionic bondings. So without any further delay, let's begin. Why do atoms form chemical bondings in the first place? The reason is that the atoms would want to achieve the exact same stable electronic configuration like those of the noble gases. Having a stable electronic configuration means to have a valency of 8. Valency is the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. So when we say an atom has a valency of 8, we mean that to its outermost shell contains 8 electrons. An atom with a stable electronic configuration does not form any reaction, which is why the noble gases also don't really react to anything. There are three types of chemical bonding. Firstly, we have ionic bonding. Ionic bonding occurs between metals and nonmetals. Covalent bonding occurs only between nonmetals. Metallic bonding, on the other hand, occurs between metals only. Ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is a transfer of electrons among the metallic and the nonmetallic atoms. In this process, the metals transfer their electrons to the nonmetals, meaning the metals are the ones that lose some of their electrons, while the nonmetals are the ones that gain them. This allows both the metal and the nonmetal to achieve a stable electronic configuration. When an atom loses an electron, it also gains a positive charge. But when the atom gains an electron, it gains a negative charge. We can represent the ionic bonds using the dot and cross diagram, in which we simply include the valence electrons of the atoms. Here, in this example, we have sodium chloride, NaCl. One atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. Sodium has a valency of 1 and chlorine has a valency of 7. So sodium gives away its electron to chlorine. As a result, both the atom now has 8 electrons in its outermost shell. Now, since sodium gave away its electron to chlorine, it ends up having a positive charge. And since chlorine gained an electron, it ends up having a negative charge. Let us see another example. We have potassium oxide, K2O. Two atoms of potassium and one atom of oxygen. Potassium has a valency of 1, whereas oxygen has a valency of 6. And each of the potassium atom transfers its electron to oxygen, which then gains two electrons. As a result, both the potassium atoms and also the oxygen atom end up having eight electrons in their atom shell. Now, since potassium was the one to give away the electrons, it ends up having a positive charge. And since oxygen was the one to gain those two electrons, it ended up having a negative charge. Ionic compounds are those formed by the ionic bonding. They form a giant structure of ions and have a regular repeating arrangement called an ionic lattice. If we observe one layer of the lattice, we will see that each chloride ion is surrounded by six sodium ions. Properties of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are solid in room temperature and they have high melting and boiling points. They conduct electricity only when they are in the molten state and are unable to do so when they are in solid state. They are soluble in water but insoluble in inorganic solvents. Thank you for watching today's video. That is all for today and hope to see you all in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned. Bye.